Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Daily Six. As we get into the cooler fall weather and even into the wintertime, I spend a lot of my time uh, when I get into the Word of God and prayer. I spend it here in my car, get down to the little city park and, and spend some time with God. So I want to invite you along with me as we're continuing our series in the book of Acts. Grab your Bibles, read Acts chapter 13, verses 1 through 12. So pause the video, soak in it, Acts 13, 1 through 12, and then come on back and let's talk. All right, so have you read Acts 13, verses 1 through 12? If you haven't, pause the video, soak in it, let the Holy Spirit speak to you, and then let's see what he has to say to us together. So this is kind of a fun story. Um, we see the introduction of a brand new character to the scriptures, Barnabas. And there in verse 1, it says, In the church there were many prophets and teachers. Barnabas was one of them, and we learn other places in scripture that Barnabas' name means son of encouragement. So we get this idea that he's a he's a, a fellow who is very encouraging. He loves people. We're going to see that throughout uh, the book of Acts, that that's kind of his, his orientation. The verse goes on, lists a few other of these prophets and so forth. But notice in verse 2 where it says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. So there's something here, friends, about you and I approaching God in a spirit of worship but also fasting. And fasting can be a sacrifice that we give to God. Maybe you're most familiar with fasting from food, skipping a meal or skipping several meals, you know, and, and devoting that time to prayer, but also that hunger kind of pushes us, right? Well, you can fast from other things too. You could fast from uh, social media. You could fast from a particular hobby or interest. You could, you know, things that you could sacrifice to the Lord to get your mind focused on the Lord. So verse two, while they were worshiping and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. We're going to learn in just a minute that Saul uh, is actually the Apostle Paul. He got renamed or, or they began to call him something different because of his faith in the Lord. So all through this series in the book of Acts, as we're studying this, we're looking for where am I in this story? What might God do in me like he did here? We consider the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, to be the normal Christian life. This is normative Christianity. So what should I do with this? Well, if, if, if we want to know what God wants for us, we want to know God's will for us, we want to know the, the calling God has for us, well, worship and fasting is part of that, that we give God a focus space where prayer is not just, you know, ask, making requests of him, you know, God, please do this, please do that, please reveal to me something. But we're also, we're also devoting ourselves in a space of worship and adoration and um, giving God, the word worship means worth-ship. We're, we're centering ourselves on his value to us and fasting. And then notice what he says there, that the Holy Spirit said to them. So here's, here's kind of what I'm learning in this, is that I want to know the will of God. I want to know God's hand for me. I want God to lead me and speak to me. So it requires or calls upon me to listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say, which really only comes about uh, when I give him focus and to make him the center of my life in worship and prayer. Notice in verse 4, uh, it says, The two of them, they were sent on their way by the Holy Spirit. So uh, Saul or Paul and Barnabas go, they're sent by the Holy Spirit and his power. So it describes where they went and so forth. They run into this guy who's a sorcerer. His name is Elymas. And he's connected to this pro-council, this um, a big political leader who becomes very curious about his faith. And notice there that verse 8, that Elymas the sorcerer, that's what his name means, sorcerer, opposed them and tried to turn the pro-council away from the faith. And then Saul, who was also called Paul, that's where we learned his new name, look at this, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elymas and said, you're a child of the devil, so forth, and he begins to rebuke him. And you notice it's kind of interesting that Saul or Paul prophesies over Elymas that he's going to be blind. That's the exact same thing the Lord did to Saul on the road to Damascus, who would become Paul, to blind him, catch his attention, get him to turn back to the Lord. So 
something that I, that I see here, kind of two things in this text. We think about ourselves and where are we in this? First is this, we said that, that I need the Holy Spirit to lead me. Where does the Holy Spirit want me to go? So worship, fasting, prayer, asking God in that centered space of giving him worth, making him the center, the most important thing of me, will lead to the Holy Spirit being in position to be able to speak and lead me. The second thing I notice is that as, as Paul and Barnabas experienced this opposition, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was able to confront the opposition. So here's what I think about for me. I need God's leadership in my life. Some of what God's going to lead me to is going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be challenging. Maybe even something I don't want to do or I'm going to face some type of opposition. I need the power of the Holy Spirit to be the one to work against whatever opposition I faith, w- face, whether it's opposition from someone else or from a circumstance. And then, of course, you notice what you saw what happened there in verse 12, that when the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. He was amazed at the power of God displayed through Paul and Barnabas. All right, this video is going to end in about 20, 25 seconds. So here's what I want to ask you to do. Would you give God six more minutes. I'm serious, man. Come on, give give God. You can give God 12 minutes in your day. You give at least that to social media. All right, I'm preaching at you. Give God six more minutes. And would you, in that space, center on his worth? Would you worship him? Would you contemplate, maybe giving something up, fasting, and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you? All right, let's see what he has to say as you give God six more minutes, and then come back tomorrow. We'll pick up the rest of Acts chapter 13. Mm-hmm.